First up is this heavy, very heavy GE switch lever. It has these pins that you can relocate to change how far it swings. And on the back, it, it really just rotates this square hole that I'm assuming would hook into some sort of heavy duty switch. So this would give you some serious leverage. And uh, there's the information on it. So I'm not sure what I'll do with it. Maybe try to hook it up to something to make a Frankenstein laboratory grade switch to turn on the air compressor or something. I don't know. All right, next item is a wonderful Crescent lineman's plier, seven inch, 1950. So 73 years old, pretty nice. Crest alloy. Uh, the rubber grip on the handles seems still usable, though in a little rough shape. And it has a very well-formed notch. It seems too perfectly formed to be an accidental cut through a live wire, though I suppose that's still possible. Um, but the profile of it is, seems to be very perfect. So I feel like this is one of those ones where it's intended so that you could use it to help strip uh, insulation off of electrical wires. So, pretty cool. I found this heavy duty flathead screwdriver where the shaft is still straight, the tip is still nice, and it is the rear striker style. The handle is split and chipped, so I don't uh, think I'm gonna mess around with trying to save that handle. Uh, just as a future pro future project, maybe I'll make a new handle in two pieces and glue them together and then slide the ferrule up. I'm not sure how else to get a wood handle on there because this is, you know, large and you can't slide it over this end. So, I don't know. Possible future project. It was a quarter. Next item is a very interesting looking old divider or compass type thing. Um... It has just a simple threaded rod coming off that side and passing through a loop there and this adjustable nut. And uh, for 50 cents, it followed me home. Next up was this uh, small, very sharp drill bit uh, that goes in a brace type chuck. And it just seems smaller than usual. Uh, so I'm not, not sure if it actually fits the chucks that I normally have, but I thought it was worth picking up because it's different, I think, from most of the ones I have. And then this one was the opposite. It's really big and chunky. It's way bigger than usual. I think this one's a little smaller than usual, and this one's bigger than usual. So when you look at this one, it says Cleveland T and D Co. Cleveland, Ohio, USA, and it has a symbol there with a C inside of a diamond, and then it says seven and a half millimeters. So, interesting. And then here's another drill item that I don't think I've ever seen before. It has a drill bit that's replaceable with these set screws in this uh, sort of countersink head. I'm not sure what the purpose of this sliding up and down these spring-loaded fingers is, but then these parts here should fit into a typical three-jaw like Jacob's chuck in a drill press or hand drill. So it was a buck and I've never seen it before. If anyone out there can tell me a little more about it or explain what this thing's for, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave me a comment. Thank you. Next up is a small file with wood handle. And uh, although the file may be worn out, it doesn't feel too sharp anymore, uh, I figured I could make a brass ferrule for this and reuse this handle on some other small files. And uh, so, you know, for 50 cents, I thought it was worth it. 
And then next up is this interesting looking punch. Um, it's pretty sharp. It's got a two-sided knurled grip, which is unusual, instead of the usual four-sided or round with square head. And here at the tip it says Dar Van. And I've never heard of that brand or anything, so I'm going to have to look that up. It's a little bit of mushrooming at the top, but not too bad. And I don't know if this is a <clears throat> I don't know if this is actually repurposed from something else. Uh, or if it's if this is in its original form, but it's pretty cool. And next up is a pipe wrench. It's a 10 inch and the jaws are just in a really great shape. It's nice and sharp. Everything's there. Nothing's missing. And I think it says Pennons Corp Chicago made in USA. Kind of hard to read that. Yeah, that's better. Pennons Corp Chicago made in USA. Drop forward steel, two bucks. And last but not least, a very interesting tool that I've never seen before. Look at the size of this thing. <sighs> You ever seen a pruning shear like that with that sort of action? It says here Barco Machine Products, Cleveland 13O, Cleveland, Ohio, made in USA, has a patent number, so I'll look up the patent. And uh, without getting my fingers in there, it's a pruner. And on this side, it says, uh, come on, light. Alligator pruning shears, number 101, made in USA. And uh, it has this interesting little tab here that you can pull down and it is the lock. And then push it back in and then it's ready to use again. Chomp, chomp, chomp. So, pretty cool, huh? Anyone ever see... <clears throat> anyone ever see one of those before? Alright, that's it. I think the total haul was like $16 and something cents. So, I thought it was totally worth it. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.